Hola. Okay. <laughs> My name is Carmel James and I'm from Newcastle, Delaware. I am uh, developing a electrocatalyst. Um, it's basically a copper surface that we're modifying in order to chemically reduce carbon dioxide. So taking a waste gas and making something useful out of it is our end goal. I would say if you're not really good at science, and even if you are, find a study buddy. Finding someone to study with who isn't going to distract you at the same time is possibly the best thing to do in science because then you have someone to bounce ideas off of. I look at science as a puzzle that I have to solve and sometimes I'm missing pieces, sometimes I'm not, but I think it's really cool to try and figure out things that no one else can really see. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, it's research. That it's something new, it's something different, and it's not structured like the classes. So it's, you know, it's research. You get to kind of make up your own project and then kind of take it forward. So I jumped on the chance when I heard it. I was like, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> something different. Of course it's exciting. It's chemistry. Uh, my name is Daniel Brown. I'm from Fairfax. Puts you on the edge of um, the world of knowledge. And you're pushing the boundary just a tiny bit. Don't be afraid to be nerdy. The common name for a nematode is the roundworm. It's pretty interesting what we do because we can go out and take a little bit of soil or a little bit of rotting vegetation, put it on a petri plate, and worms crawl out every time. The ones that we study are, are in the soil. We can actually film that. So we can make movies of the worm embryos developing and watch what every single one of their cells are doing during that time. I'm Sarah Eubanks and I'm from Pocosin, Virginia. I'm working with Dr. Baker uh, with the model organism Danny O'Riro. My students and I study physiology and the model organism the zebrafish. Yeah, we're going to dissect 30 brains tomorrow. So when, you're, when you're doing an experiment, even if you're wrong, and even if you don't find anything, you find something. You find something else, you find something different, even if it's not what you're looking for. There's always something new to, to find, even if it's not exactly what you're looking for. You can make mistakes and it's okay. <laughs> even though there's big mistakes, you're, it's okay. I am Robert Higgins and I'm from McLean, Virginia. What I am doing is using microwave technology to synthesize a polymer. The final goal is to um, make an eco-friendly solvent. Also just to learn more about the world through science. It's something that you have to work on almost every single day. Pretty much practice makes perfect, but in the, at the end of the day, it's very rewarding to actually understand that because it's not something that everyone can do. I'm Eric Johnson, I'm from Woodbridge, Virginia. With science, you can actually hold your proof in your hands. Like, you can make something. Just be like, yeah, I think this is, this will work, and here's my proof. I am holding it in my hands. It's just the ability to create something out of something completely different is just really cool to me. Just find something that interests you. Like, everyone will get the same basic background knowledge, like, oh, this does this, this does this, but if you look into it more, you might find something that you didn't even think of before, something that interests you, something that isn't always taught in school, but can still be learned about. Uh, my name is Yoshi Takeda, and I'm from Herndon, Virginia. I'm actually a biology and physics double major with a chemistry minor. People get a lot of different looks from that one, but um, uh, the research I'm doing with Dr. Whelan this summer is on turtles uh, in Fredericksburg. Ever since freshman year of uh, high school, I've been interested in being a doctor. It's not the answer that really matters, but the steps that it takes to it. I think that's the biggest thing, though, is to find people that you do enjoy spending time with and know what you're going through, really. It does help to have a friend there with you to study with. I'm Nicole Crowder. I'm in the Department of Chemistry, and I'm an assistant professor. I'm Diane Baker, and I am an assistant professor in biological sciences. I'm Teresa Grana, and I am an assistant professor, and I am in the Department of Biological Sciences. No, they don't have to be the top students, absolutely not. Some of my best research students have not been the best as far as grades, um, and sometimes that ends up boosting their grades because then they start studying harder because they decide they want to go to graduate school. Um, some students can get into graduate school just based on their research experience. They may not be the best students, but they do well in lab, they're willing to explore, they're willing to take chances, and they also, you know, can make conclusions based on their results. So I look for students like that. Because um, sometimes the students that are top of the class don't want to take chances. 
they don't like it when things don't work. <laughs> And research, things don't work the first time, the second time, the third time. It's called research for a reason. Um, so yeah, you don't have to be the best student. In my student researchers, I am looking for students who are devoted to their work um, and that are motivated by more than just grades. I want students that are motivated by curiosity. I want them to be willing to ask questions and to interact with me. So I want them to be communicating with me. Are they understanding it? Do they need help with something? Are they seeing something I'm not seeing? And um, so that it's actually that we have a research community rather than me ordering them to do things. Would you like for there to be a greener option when you go to the pump? Would you like for gas to be cheaper? Would you like for global warming and climate change to not be an issue? <laughs> These are all fabulous things that our research is hopefully going to achieve at some point. Right now in our lab, we're the two main projects we're looking at, one is the control of appetite by neurohormones in the brain. And so that's very relevant um, because people are interested in learning what um, leads to obesity um, in humans, um, what leads to anorexia nervosa in humans, and also what, um, you know, how appetite is controlled in agricultural animals, including aquaculture fishes. Um, the other main arm of our research this summer is looking at the effects of this um, herbicide atrazine on development in zebrafish and specifically looking at the development of these neural networks in the brain. So we, um, we found a, a worm in King George County that resembles a parasite in its life cycle and its reproduction, but it's not a parasite. And parasites are problems for, for lots of people around the world. Um, parasitic nem nematodes. Um, they're very hard to study in the lab because you need to have a host that's right and that would include a human host and we don't want to do parasite research with human subjects. But um, understanding this worm that we found in King George and how its life cycle goes, and how it develops and what genes it uses may help us understand parasites better and could actually be used to screen for a drug that kills parasitic nematodes.